So have you ever wondered what are all those commands you type in to figure out how to install your favorite program using APT in your Debian based installation? Well, in this video, I'm breaking all that down from the GPG, the third party key signing, and then just adding those extra commands so you can type APT, your program, and then it just magically installs. So let's start out with GPG. You see a lot of things that go GPG and then a server and then the actual key ID to download that specific key on that computer. There's a lot of things that go into it. I'm going to break that down. But what GPG is, is it's just a tool on your system to download and interact with these keys. So with that said, I'm going to jump into terminal here and give you some examples and break down each command and what you should be looking for when going and installing these and also how to actually call down those keys because when I first got on Debian, I was coming from Arch and I was like, I just want everything and I was just pulling in like Ubuntu PPAs, which is a big no-no for a Debian based install and just adding a ton of keys that I didn't need. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and remove and kind of call that down and beautify my key process. And you probably should too, if you've done a lot of these, just to make sure you only have the key servers and, and things you want to have on your system. So uh, with that said, let's jump into the terminal. Okay, so I wanted to do real fast, just kind of overview of APT key because it's so misunderstood. So the very first thing I want to do is clean up my APT, which I haven't completely done. If you watch my Debian live stream, which was uh, me just typing a bunch of commands like most people do when they're first getting into the distribution, I added a bunch of bad APT. So let's clear out some of those. So we're going to go a sudo APT key list. And we'll get to see all of these keys. And I'll, obviously most of these are from Debian, but here are the ones I've added. So let's look for a bad one. This one right here is a PPA. That is a, a Ubuntu key that should not be in here. I don't know what I was trying to do on this one, but it needs to disappear. So we need the key ID. You see this all over the help, but nobody really actually comes out and says, hey, where the hell you find the key ID on this thing? You see all this extra garbage. Well. The key ID is actually the last eight digits, these things right here. So we'll just copy that, come down here, and then we want to delete that key. So to do this, we just do a sudo apt key del, and then we'll just paste this in here. Got to take out the space though. Hit enter, you get the okay. And then let's just go back and list, and you'll see this key has been disappeared. If that's a word, disappeared. Poof from the, the, the repositories, but it's no longer in here. So you'll no longer see the PPA is actually here. So that's pretty awesome. So there you go. And I'm going to probably go through here, see if there's anything else, which it doesn't look like there's really much of anything. So with that done, um, my APT keys are really good, or it's actually GPG keys are really good. So let's go ahead and download one just to kind of show you the commands that you're constantly typing in to get your APT working or downloading those packages that you want. But I want to explain and break down the commands and what you need to do every time you add one of these keys for signing to add the extra functionality to APT. So uh, GPG, which is the tool uh, that is basically used for secure APT or signing of the keys and checking the signatures. We first start with downloading and receiving the key. So we'll go ahead and do that. And what this command does is it actually goes out and grabs this key and then creates its own key ring. It's not really integrated into the system yet just by running this command. So this command just gets the key its own key ring, but we need it integrated in the system after it's downloaded. Now this was just a part of the sample example article, so we're gonna just go ahead and cancel this out. Now this command, after you've run the command above and it received the key, you would actually run this command to export it from its own key ring into APT's key ring. So this takes this specific one and adds it. From here, we can add it to the sources list. And then from the sources list, we now have a very happy Debian. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and cancel this real fast. And we're going to run an APT update just to, just to make sure everything is kosher. 
and you see right here now the apt update what that does is it updates the cache and it double checks your sources list and makes sure that you don't have any warnings saying hey invalid signature or duplicate signatures and if you do have duplicate signatures definitely go to the apt folder and i'm going to show you that real fast as well from here in this apt folder you'll see the sources list which you can modify however i recommend installing each specific source under the actual sources list.d directory and then you also have the trusted gpg which is everything from the ap key apt key list that we just went over so those are the two files that you really need to be concerned with and i'm going to go ahead and look at our sources list just to see what we're using now i already added all these unofficial repos right here um, but everything here looks pretty good nothing crazy however i would have liked to seen taking these out and putting them in their own list in the sources list dot d directory so let's go ahead and go over to that and i'm going to show you kind of what that looks like because this is another method now if you have them in two spots like you have it here like let's say i had uh, the google chrome browser here and i also had it on my sources list it would show up with a big w when i ran my apt updates so if you're getting warnings on your apt updates definitely go into here and delete it either from the sources.list.d directory which i would recommend leaving it there and then going into sources.list the actual file we just were in and deleting that line item from there so you'd only want it in one space you either want it here or the sources.list file so uh, with that out of the way you can see uh, i'm just going to go into like lutris real fast just so you can see what that looks like it's just a single line item showing that this is what's in it so it's it's the same thing as adding that line into the sources dot list file it's just in a different area and this is a little more nice and neat uh the reason why you want to put it in the directory instead of the file is you don't want to bloat up that one file this makes it far easier to track in my opinion okay so let's go over a sample install i'm going ahead and pull up sublime text and we're going to install it using the installer here and i want to just kind of break down each part so you better understand what goes into a package installation using apt so with that said let's go ahead and install the gpg key and this is actually a combination command actually what i just went over was downloading and then exporting it to uh, the apt keyring this basically takes that gpg key and puts it directly into the apt keyring so uh, let's go ahead and flip over to our terminal paste this in and that worked so from here ensure apt set up to work with http sources I believe I have this package already, but let's go ahead and run it. Yep, I do. And then we get to choose which channel, stable or dev. We want the stable channel. And this is a combo command as well, and I want to break that down. So anytime you have a pipe here, let's go ahead. Echo, DEB, this is basically the line item right here that's going to be added to a new file that's teed up in the sources.list.d directory under sublime text.list. So when we do this, it outputs that line to that file. So I want to just go ahead and do a cat real fast just so you can see the sources.list file. So here's the cat of the sublime text.list. And as you see, it's what we had in the echo command. So you just have a better understanding. So we've imported the key directly into the apt key now you'll notice that when i did my example i did not do it in that method where i actually downloaded it into its own key ring and then took it from that key ring and imported it into the apt key ring this top command basically did it all, both those steps in one i just wanted to show that real fast so with this done we've done the sources we've done this and now we can just do a pseudo apt update to go ahead and pull in the extra source here and as you see right there under git 9 uh, it showed that it pulled in that new one so from here we could actually directly install our package which is sublime text using apt now so let's go ahead and flip back and you'll see the update command which we've already run and then it's just simply install sublime text.
and there we go so if we pull up our main menu here we can type in sublime text and you'll notice it's in our applications menu and there we go so this is sublime text uh good text editor but it does cost money so i probably won't use it but i just wanted to show a sample install of a program using apt and third-party keys and that was third-party key signing in debian or debian based installations i hope this helped please let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments below and if you'd like to help make videos like this consider joining me on patreon and i'll see you in the next video